When you shoot your self-tape auditions at home, lighting is a critical component. Today, I'm gonna unbox and set up a crafty professional photo studio softbox lighting kit and show you some before and after lighting setups. After the bump! Doug Fall with Augmented Actor, where we help you augment your acting career with tips, tactics, and tech. If you like this video, please like and share, and also subscribe to my channel. Now, any actor who is a film or television or commercial actor is going to have to do self-tape auditions regularly. It's just the nature of the beast nowadays. Even as a theater actor, you might have to submit an audition for a project that is in another city. I don't really like doing self-tape auditions because they require an awful lot of setup and you have to play all these different roles other than just being an actor and concentrating on your acting. But it's the nature of the beast, the world is going that way now, and you have to be able to do self-tape auditions. One of the most critical components of self-tape audition is good lighting. In my setup here today, I have a, a plain background, which is what you always want to use for a self-tape audition as an actor, and then I have uh, two windows over here. So I got a big bay window over here and a big bay window over there. And that's it for my lighting setup. I don't have a front facing light. And so you can see that I got light on the side of my face is it's kind of a yellow light. There's a sort of a dark bar in the middle of my face here. My eyes are not very distinct. I'm wearing glasses today, but you can't see any of those nice reflections in the eyes. And, and, uh, and so my face is not really well lit. You'll notice that on some of my earlier YouTube videos that my lighting kind of sucks. My green screens are kind of muddy and sloppy and that's totally on me. I didn't have a really great lighting kit. Now, if you're on a budget, can lights are great. You can just get a, a cheapy little can light or two at Home Depot, put a, a shower curtain lining over the top of it to give it some diffusion. And that should do a pretty good job of giving you some side lights, key lights, front lights, back lights, rim lights, all those different lights you might need. But if you really wanna go an extra step, for about 75 to $100, you can get a really decent soft box lighting kit with all the stands and, and accoutrement that come with it. And so to bump my game up a little bit, I just ordered a crafty professional soft box lighting kit and I'm gonna unbox it and show you how to set it up. And then we're gonna try out some new lighting setups and scenarios and show you the difference between this lighting and the actual soft box lighting kit. So let's get started. Cookie dough. Let's open this up here. The kit comes with a large carrying case, three soft boxes with diffusion screens. You also get three photo light bulb, 135 watt, 5500 K daylight balanced pure white CFL fluorescent light bulbs. You also get three lightweight aluminum 80 inch retractable stands and a boom accessory to hang your overhead light up above your head, as well as a sandbag, sand not included. So you really get everything you need to enhance your lighting and pack it up and carry it around and store it properly. I found that the setup process was super easy. The stands are nice, but they're a little bit lightweight. They tend to bend when you extend them all the way up. Uh, there are some sturdier stands out there like the Fovatec Studio Light Kit Pro, which I'll link to in the description below. The soft boxes are a little smaller than I expected, but still adequate. Okay, I'm all done setting up the lights and this is my original lighting. Now, you'll notice that I've lost a little bit of my, uh, my side light over here because the sun has moved over my house. So my natural lighting has turned into sort of this dark uh, competing. I got light on this side and dark on this side. You really can't see my eyes carefully. And the background is super bright and wrinkly and it competes with my face. Everybody's looking at the background, right? So let's turn the lights on one at a time and I'll show you the difference that these lights make. We're gonna start with the key light, which is the light that's closest to me. And I have it right here beside my camera. It's a, you know, it's a big soft box right outside the lens. Let's turn that one on. So there is the key light. Now you'll notice that it, it accentuates the natural light that's coming uh, in this direction and it provides a nice bright fill of my of the the left side of my face and it leaves a nice shadow over here so let's turn on the fill light which is over here it's set up like this light over here but it's a little bit further away from the camera this is going to help fill in all these shadows over here so you'll notice now that the shadows are filled in i've got a kind of an even 
glowy look about my face, but we're still looking at this ugly background back here. So let's turn on the boom mic, uh, the boom light, which is back here in the corner. It's up on the boom rack and it's facing the curtains going this way. So there you have it. See how the curtains have nice shadows and highlights on them. A lot of the wrinkles are gone and the focus is now on my face, my pretty face. You'll notice you'll see reflections in my glasses and without the glasses, if I come up close to my eyes, you'll see like nice little highlights in each of my eyes. That's reflections from these lights and that is kind of key. That's what you wanna look for when you're doing headshots, when you're doing self-tape auditions. That means you have good lighting. That means your eyes are in focus and uh, an important part of the visual image that you're trying to portray. Okay, so now let's try a few different lighting setups and see what difference we can get. Okay, so here's a lighting setup with just one boom light up above, shining kind of straight down on me. It creates shadows under my chin and in my eyes. You can't see my eyes really well. This might be good for a noirish sort of setting. I, I still have a little bit of natural light coming in that I haven't been able to block out, but that's kind of an idea of how that lighting would look. And here's another three point lighting setup. Right now I have my natural light from my window over here. I have one big key light right here that is a softbox behind the camera. And then over here, I have a softbox kind of reflecting on my head and the curtain and then one just on the curtain back there. That makes the curtain pop with color, but still gives me a lot of light on my face and a little bit of shadow. So it makes it a little bit more interesting for interview purposes. You always kind of want to shoot on the dark side of your face. Uh, you know, the lights coming from this direction is lighting up this side of my face. The shadows are sort of falling on this side of my face. And if the camera is looking at the dark side, it's much more cinematic, much more interesting. So this would be a great setup for an interview. Now I just have two of my lights aimed at the back curtain. This would be ideal for, uh, you know, some sort of interview where you wanted to obscure your subject's face and be very noirish or silhouette in style. Uh, I have natural light coming from my window still on the sides over here, so that's why you're seeing my face. If you didn't have the natural light, if you could block out all that natural light, you would only see the curtain and my silhouette. This lighting mimics the lighting that I had before. I have a softbox over here and a softbox over here aiming the light this direction. So that kind of mimics my bay windows. But notice that I still have a little bit more clarity in the middle of my face because these are big, bright, diffused boxes and I can control how far away they are from me. So question of the day, I wanna see what your bad lighting situations look like. Leave a video or a, a photo comment down in the comments below and tell me about your experiences with lighting and, and whether or not this video was useful to you. I wanna hear from you. And as always, please consider subscribing to my channel and like and share this video and I hope to see you next time.